Good evening, my friends. Welcome to the show. I am Lou Mangello. It is so good to see you again. If you are watching live, thank you so very much for tuning in. Please do me a favor, invite some of your friends, share this out on Facebook and Twitter. And if you're watching on the replay, don't forget to join us right here, 7.30 p.m. Eastern, every Wednesday night. And to be sure to turn on notifications as well, as I'll be going live, not just from here, but uh, from the parks. I've got a couple of special things coming up, including later on this week, and something very special coming up next weekend. We'll get to that a little bit later. Uh, thank you all. And it's so good to see you again. So many familiar faces uh, right on time in the box. I love seeing Ricky and Paul and Chad. Colin, I got to put my glasses on. I'm getting too old for this. Uh, Judy, Rodrigo, good to see you. So many people from the WW Radio Nation who are here and the WDW Radio Box family. Thanks to all of you who've gone over and joined our community over on the Box People group over on Facebook. As I said, uh, at the beginning of the year, I'm going to start doing a lot more specifically on the group instead of the page. So like the page, turn on notifications, but also make sure that you uh, join the community over on the Box People page as well and uh, invite your friends there too. Uh, again, Amanda Bowner, nice to see you. Megan, Steven, Stuart Sternberg, always like right there on time. Jim Orahoski. Again, uh, I've, there's also a lot of familiar names and faces who I saw this past weekend at the Walt Disney World Marathon. So congratulations, bravo, brava to all of you, whether you walked, walked, ran, pushed, wheeled, cheered whatever it might be i think cheering was harder this it was a cold in, in typical disney fashion they um they turned on the the freezing temperatures this weekend and then two days later it was 85 degrees outside so welcome to florida uh jerry applegate it's good to see you it was nice uh running into you recently as well jacob buxton mary wall nikki keller uh lori brown justin matt uh, so there's a lot of a um, lot of stuff to cover tonight. Uh, don't forget too that the show, which was a little bit late, came out today. We did a live listener. Uh, Her Majesty was in town this week. We recorded uh, uh, a a listener email segment and actually had an unscheduled visit from a uh, a surprise guest that I can't wait to go and see soon. Somebody just said, uh, Lynn Yaw said. Uh, how many rice balls did I ha have I eaten at Maria and Enzo's? So um, I've only eaten the 17 that I ate during the media preview last week. I'm pacing myself out. I need to fit back into pants so I can actually leave the house. And uh, I'll go back in a couple of weeks and give it the full review and probably have less than 17 rice balls. Don't judge me. Uh, I was do they were They were tiny, and I was doing it for your benefit. So, uh, but there's a lot of other stuff that I want to chat and uh, and get to tonight. I also want to give you a couple of reminders right off the bat. I mentioned it earlier. Don't want to forget this Friday. I'm actually going to be getting a uh, a look over at the Epcot International Festival of the Arts, and certainly I'll be going live from there as well. I don't know exactly what time. That's why it's important to turn on notifications, both in the group and on the page. And um, what I love about the Festival of the Arts is much like the Flower and Garden Festival, it has become sort of a mini food and wine. So I'm more the the, the arts the, the arts that I'm most interested in are less about the um, the musical arts, the theatrical arts than I am the culinary arts. So I, I'm looking forward to see what the chefs have in store for us, and um, I will have stretch. I think I need to get a bigger pair of stretchy pants before Friday. Because of, you know, the week that I've had. So, um, Judy Pavarini said, you had pants on on Saturday, didn't you? Uh, I always leave with pants or a muumu, one of the two. Although I still, ha I still have yet to receive the WW Radio Blue Moroccan muumu that was promised to me by somebody who may or may not be in the box this evening. Um, I might actually need it soon because I'm pushing maximum density. Um Melanie says, I have a few friends there. Um, the food, Megan, so Megan, I can do the food, the culinary arts. I, I believe there's going to be 12 to 15 marketplace kiosks again for the Festival of the Arts. I don't know. I have not seen anything as yet. Uh, Leticia Burgess Turney, uh, nice to see you. She says, nice shirt. I am just here for the food. This was a, a prototype for the one that is now actually in the WW Radio merchandise shop. 
And of course, because I'm using new software, I haven't loaded that logo there. But if you go to www.radio.com slash logo shop, you should find that in there. And I think they're on sale this weekend. I think they're on sale. I think all the shirts are on sale for $14 uh, this weekend. Rita says the art is a feast for the eyes. It's also a feast for the belly. And that's really the sort of arts that I am uh, most looking forward to. But I am going to go live from there, I believe. Um, we might be able to do, I think there's a couple of presentations that they have set up for us to go and uh, check out. Brett Meeks, I love, of all the Meekses, Brett is definitely in my top three. Um, but your son really sort of escalated to rock star status this weekend. Um, did I catch up on Sleet and Thought Out? So I did um, I did Thaw Out because, again, it's 85 degrees the day after. Catching up on Sleep, not so much. Um Still, my body clock is not right, and we, like, not that you care. Wild, weird, wacky dreams last night that woke me, like, it, it woke me up out of a deep sleep at, like, 2 o'clock in the morning, uh, or maybe it was just the idea that I had to get up to go cheer, but I woke up at 2 o'clock in the morning, so the body clock is not, um, it's not fully back on schedule yet. Um, Rob DeLeon is asking me about the first purchased fast pass. Um, that is definitely something... I want to get into, I have been monitoring a lot of your uh, conversations and discussions, and this is definitely something that I want to chat with you guys about. I do want to test something tonight. I'm going to need your help uh, testing a new way for you guys to call in. Again, I'm playing around with some new software a, uh, as well as a new way for you guys to call in. So we'll see. Maybe I'll have you guys uh, call in as well as comment in um, uh in the in the in the chat to see what your thoughts are. I'll, I'll I'll give it a couple more minutes. We'll start to talk about it. I'll look at some of your comments. I'll share my thoughts on it, which may or may not surprise you. And then uh, I certainly want to hear your feedback. Um, and we'll play a little devil's advocate just to get some uh, interesting dialogue going. Uh, Jimmy Kenny says my lawn and driveway are still completely iced over. Uh, I'm assuming that you don't live in Florida. Uh, Lisa says, I'm still waking up at 2 a.m. and I'm in withdrawal from not seeing hours before sunrise every morning. I read it. I, I clicked it before I read it. Um, I think there's a hint of sarcasm in there. I don't think she misses me or the 2 a.m. mornings. Um, although I, I, I will say that what I do miss about the weekend is why I think so many of you actually participate. Because I, I know it's about the medals. I know it's about the sense of accomplishment. I know it's about the training. But I do think it's about the camaraderie. And the one thing I'm so mad at myself, and I do it all the time, I need like a gentle reminder or a not-so-gentle reminder, is at the meet of the month, I wish I would have gotten a picture of all of you who were there because it was just – it was remarkable to see so many people either from the nation, the running team, the Make-A-Wish family was there. And that was like one of – like it really, really touched me uh, to see so many people there. And again, on um, Sunday night, we uh, our, our team got together as well. But it is. I think it's about the friendships. I think about the camaraderie. As a spectator, in in many ways, I love watching the team come together beforehand, after, and on the course. Um, you know, some some folks who are having a difficult time were helped along by other team members. And you do it as a team, not just for each other, but anybody in the course that needs a little encouragement, that needs a little bit of help one way or the other. And that's one of the things that impresses me most about you is it's not just the people who are wearing the blue. It's anybody out there that you want to help. And I and I love and appreciate all of you for that. So um, let's see. Um, Rebecca sneezing into the uh, seeing into the box from work. A lot of people got sick after the marathon. Um, it's it's sort of like um, 28 days later uh, after marathon because everybody is uh, sick. JD Pavarin was pretty much speechless at the meet of the month, and so was I. You want to know why? Because I met and hugged Judy Pavarini. We cried a little bit together because that's you know that's what we do. Uh, Marla Chan, good to see you. Jim Rohoski, I will be posting. A video in the meet. Brian, if you are in here, um, he was so helpful videotaping uh, the meet. Although the traffic was crazy that day. A lot of people getting there. So um, Mary Wall says, great job to all the runners. I agree. Uh, anybody, and look, I still believe in my little Lou Mangello heart of hearts. 
that anybody that lines up um, is is a winner already because I think lining up and signing up is the hardest part. I understand what I mean by that. Um, the commitment to do it. And, you know, even if you didn't get a chance to finish for one reason or another, the fact that you showed up um, is the thing that is incredibly impress- impressive to me. Uh, Amy Haravel, I hope that you get a chance to come to one of the meets of the month as well. I'm working on February's now. I have some travel and other things going on in February. I believe it might be the 11th. Don't quote me on that. Do not quote me. I'm uh, I'm keynoting uh, that weekend, so I, I have to see if I can pull it all off um, together. Actually, speaking of which, I remember to actually load the logo. Man, I'm going to get this right one of these days. I am. Uh, I'm going to be... Um, the closing keynote speaker at PodFest Multimedia Expo right here in Orlando, Florida. It's at the Wyndham on iDrive. Uh, it, whether it's, it's primarily for podcasters, but even other content creators, I think, can get some value out of it. Uh, I went – yet last year, I went um, – I knew some of the participants um, just from being in this space as well as the organizers uh, and watched a little bit, and then I was invited uh, again this year. So uh, if you are in the area – Want to come by, go to lumangelo.com slash podfest18 to get your tickets. Uh, Stephanie Perry Bullock says, wait a minute, I got to go back. Oh. The Make-A-Wish family always makes me cry. It really puts our everyday problems in perspective. I agree wholeheartedly, and I love and appreciate you so much. I still owe you breakfast and lunch. You are you are like a shining star and, and an angel that came in with hot chocolate and donuts again. And uh, I missed you on full marathon day. But I brought donuts. I brought munchkins because I can't do it as well as you do. So, um, Megan Eichner, 10 days until Disney. Kenneth Locke, good to see you as well. Marty Raimondo, it's nice to see you. Uh, do you know how I can get a wish from my dad? So, Melissa Lawrence, the, the, um, the best way is to contact your local Make-A-Wish chapter. And if you don't know how to get in touch with them, just go to Make-A-Wish uh, of America, and they will contact. they'll put you in contact with um, whoever it is that you – you need to get in touch with there. So um, can I do a meet of the month at the poly? I'll buy you a Lapu Lapu. Well, there you go. Um, I, I don't know marches as yet. I am, st- I'm traveling and speaking a bit in February and March. So I don't know my calendar um, as yet. Simon Hayhurst. Nice to see you as well. So um, Bever- Brevin Butler says, did you ever work for Disney? Uh, I have never been a, uh, a Disney employee, a cast member in any way, shape or form. Maybe one day I'll tell the story about um, the, the sort of handshake offer that I got to work there and why I turned it down. Um, but that's another story for another day. I'll, def- I'll tell that story before the grease tape comes out which I'll tell any story before the grease tape comes out because the grease tape is obviously never coming out. Um, so let's sort of, let, let's get to one of the, um, the, the interesting topics of conversation, um, which really came out officially today. It was something that was um, talked about a little bit, but it's been officially announced today that guests who are staying at some Walt Disney World resorts are soon going to have the option to buy additional fast passes. To be clear, they're only going to be available to guests who are staying in club level rooms. So it's concierge level, club level level rooms. It is the option to buy fast passes are not going to be available to everybody. Let's sort of dig a little deeper into it. And again, I definitely want to hear from you. The option to buy the additional fast passes. Again, these are not front of. To be clear, because I heard there was a very there was some wrong information being disseminated early. These are not front of the line passes. They are regular fast passes, but they are going to cost guests fifty dollars per person per day. Again, only for club level guests, and they will get three. They will those that fifty dollars per person per guest will get three additional fast passes that can be used in any park. So you need to obviously have park admission, and these will give you three additional fast passes. Another option, another addition to that is that this extra Fast Pass Plus option is going to allow these guests to book their Fast Passes 90 days in advance instead of 60 days in advance for regular resort guests. Also, in addition to the three Fast Passes, the $50 per day will give guests preferred viewing areas 
for some of the nighttime spectaculars. There's also an option, if you are an annual pass holder, if you stay in these club level rooms, you have this option as well. But again, you need to be staying on dollars um, in one of these very specific rooms. Here's some of the fine print that I think is sometimes getting lost, and, and I'm going to share a little bit of, um, of of my thoughts on this well. I'm going to play devil's advocate for the sake of uh, encouraging conversation, and maybe I haven't tried this yet, but maybe we'll, we'll test you guys calling in. One thing to be clear is this $50 per day is per guest, and there's a three-day minimum. So you have to spend at least $150 on fast passes. So let's Take a minute because people are losing their marbles that all of a sudden you're not going to be able to get a fast pass for Flight of Passage, Soarin, you know, A, B, C, and D, all of um, the, the super e-ticket attractions. Let's do, a, let's do a little bit of math. Let's say the, on average a family of four goes to Walt Disney World, staying at one of these, staying at a club level room. They have to spend a minimum, a minimum of $600 for the additional fast passes that's on top of their regular park admission. It's on top of their regular room night. And just to ballpark it, to let you know, a club level room is probably going to, so we'll use Polynesian, for example, is going to run you in value season, probably a minimum of $750 per night. And I stress those things. I stress the three days, the four people, the $600, the cost of a family of four is that, I honestly think that the impact on everyday guests is going to be negligible. Time will tell, and we will see as it rolls out. But I think, I, I don't think this is something that every guest is going to do. And I think, and I was trying to sort of figure out and do quick math in my head. There's only about, you know, maybe 650, 700 club level rooms in all of Walt Disney World. If you assume that every single one of those guests has two, you know, rooms has two people in it and every single one of them gets those, maybe, but I, I don't think that's going to happen. Now, I want to flip things around. I want to I want to flip things around and I want to play a little bit of devil's advocate and I want you to do the same thing as well. I want you to put yourself in the position of a guest that is staying in a club level room. Whether you can or will ever not is, is for, for, for the purposes of this discussion, you are already paying a very, very high premium in order to stay in that resort, at that location, in that room, and to get the additional amenities. And look, what you're paying for, you're not paying, most people I don't think are paying for access to the lounge and the peanuts and the snacks and the cocktails, what you're paying for is the concierge services and the level of service that you get as a concierge guest, being able to get bookings in restaurants that you might not be able to get otherwise, which happens at every concierge desk in every hotel, in uh, especially in tourist locations. And I think if you're paying that premium, right, wouldn't you be, and maybe and I think this is where it came from, is that would you be somewhat dissatisfied if you're saying, I'm paying all this money for this special room, and yet I have to wait, you know, like, not like everybody else, but why can't I have access to additional fast passes? Why can't I have access to some additional services? So I think that's what it's giving for those guests that potentially want it, but I don't think everyone's going to take advantage of it, and I also don't think that it's going to have such an impact that Every flight of passage, uh, fast pass, is going to be gone every single day. Um, I think what would, would have been worse, and because I, I want you to think about worst case scenario, what I think would have been worse is if they just gave the three additional fast passes to all the club level guests. That's not outside the realm of possibility because that happens in, in uh, Disneyland Paris. If you're staying at um, the Disneyland Hotel at the Castle Club, you get... Not just a regular fast pass, but sort of the magic fast pass, which is you can get fast pass access to any attraction at any time, and you don't even need to book it. You walk in, you show them the card, you swipe the card, whatever it is, and you have um, 
uh, you have access to that attraction via FastPass anytime that you want. So I think, again, pl simply trying to play devil's advocate for purposes of the conversation, I think this is actually more palatable than uh, them just directly sort of buying front of the line access. Uh, I've also heard and I've seen many, many times uh, in, in conversations that this is just another money grab from Disney. Um, again, I'm not agreeing or disagreeing. I'm playing both sides of the coin. Um, I, I, I honestly doubt in my little heart of hearts, this is not about a money grab, right? But why? Because there's not enough volume. At the maximum they're going to get is, you know, if they fill those rooms, there's 600 rooms, they're going to be paying, you know, $150 a day. It's negligible. In the grand scheme of what Walt Disney World Resort pulls in every single day, the few thousands of dollars that this is going to make them is not why they do it. I think it's being done to satisfy the club level guests that are already paying a premium to stay, to have that access, to have that level of service, and now just want something more than having to wait with like other guests, right? Just look, that's why you buy a first class ticket. You want to board the plane first. You want to have a bigger seat. You want to have additional amenities, but you pay for it. Um, and I think that's what this is is doing is they're giving these first class, you know, and, and I, I'm, I'm analogizing. I'm not calling them a first class guest. Um, giving them access to purchase them because they are already paying that premium to stay in um, uh, to stay in those resorts in those specific rooms again they're not just every guest that's at grand at a deluxe resort you've got to be staying club level and you're paying hundreds if not thousands of dollars a night again i would have i i personally would have much more of an issue if they were just given to the club level guests as opposed to um them having to purchase them if i would feel that this is going to negatively impact the uh, the experience of um, of a, a, a vast majority of guests because there won't be any more um, uh, fast passes then then it's another conversation for another day I'm watching some of your comments as they are, are um, going by uh, Becky Mankin of course chiming in says people will and are paying for it that's why and how they justify it uh, I, I agree. I think it, I think this probably came from a a desire to provide a guest satisfier that club level guests were probably asking for, saying, "Look, I, I'm paying this. What do you mean I can only have? You know, can't? Is there any way I, I'll, I'll even buy additional fast passes? This is not a money grab. Um, Disney does not need to make a few thousand dollars more a day. What they do need to do is satisfy." some of the guests who are paying a premium as well as not to exclude the guests who are not. And I think that's the balance by making them pay for it, not giving it to everybody. It prevents it from being something that is going to um, detrimentally affect every other guests. Um, but look, this is one of those things where time is going to tell. Um, but I do believe like some of the other things that we look We've seen certain things that have come and gone as tests. Uh, I'll use the Tomorrowland lounges or whatever they call them, the Tomorrowland cabanas. I think that came from a a guest request to say, hey, you know, we're, our family's in the parks. Uh, is there some place we can go so we don't have to traipse all the way back to Beach Club when we're in Magic Kingdom just to relax, to get out, to get something to drink? Some people want that exclusive access. That's not my bag, baby, but for some people... That's what they want. That was a test of that. Um, you know, look, you can almost, you can make an argument, you know, the DVC lounge, you are paying a certain premium membership, having its privileges, gives you access to a DVC lounge. People who are staying at club level, I think that is what um, what people want. So Brevin says, I agree with you. I worked at Animal Kingdom Lodge in the college program at club level. It's going to make the fast pass lines longer. It's, just going, to, it's not going to make the fast pass lines longer. Just going to meet guest needs. Only a, a select few will pay the bigger price. Personal two cents. I agree. Um, this is not. If this was something that they gave to every single club level guest, it would be a much much different conversation. Um, but I don't. 
uh, necessarily think that is the case. So, Jesse Fouts, yeah, so there's only about 650 or 700 club-level rooms. When you're talking about, look, Magic Kingdom on its most packed day, I think now they've increased it. I think they pack in 75,000 guests. So even if every single one of those 700 rooms had two people in it, there's 1,400 guests that got three fast passes, the impact is going to be negligible because there's 75,000 guests there. There's 65,000 in Epcot. There's 50,000 in Animal Kingdom. There's 45,000 in Disney's Hollywood Studios. You have a few hundred thousand guests. The impact of 1,400 potentially, it's probably half that. If even half that, buy it. It's going to be a blip. It is going to be a blip on the radar. And I look, I, I'm just thinking, this is me just off the top of my head, um, uh, just sort of uh, imagining what is going to happen. We won't know until the first guest starts doing it. And I, and I believe it starts this week. So um, this this is may possibly just a trial. It may be something that's going to be tweaked. Um, but I think what Disney is doing, this is part of an ongoing look. At the end of the day, the beginning of the day, throughout the day, what Disney tries to do is make you as a guest have a better experience. How do they do that? They change the way the transportation system is working. They bring on minivans. I haven't heard anybody complain that I have to pay $20 for a minivan service. They're saying, OMG, I can't believe I, you know, it only cost me $20 and I'm getting right to the front of Magic Kingdom without having to wait for a bus for 120 minutes. And this weekend, over Marathon Weekend, people were waiting for buses nearly two hours uh, on Marathon Weekend. What they are doing is providing guest satisfiers. They're providing guests a way to have a better experience. Um, again, if this was something that, like other parks do, I, I, you know, if you if you go down the street, you can buy fast passes. You can buy access. I think that's worse than than doing this uh, because then all of a sudden it becomes a race to see who can spend additional money first. That might be something that is more for monetary gain than trying to satisfy guests who I believe are already paying that a uh, the additional premium for it. I would love to hear from you. I'm watching your chat um, go by. Uh, Paul Clark says there's probably only two attractions that are hard to get fast passes for. Flight of Passage, Toy Story Mania. I, I think there's probably one or two other ones. I think Soren is still sometimes a difficult one to get. But I agree with you. I, I don't think this is going to have the monumental impact that um, uh, guests and some people online are, are saying it's going to have, and again, there's the you know the alarmists are saying, "Wow, well, I'm never going to ride Flight of Passage again because I don't, I can't stay concierge." That that's not that is not going to be the case. Um, I was I, I was supposed to go on on one of the local news stations tomorrow morning because some of them think that the end of the world is coming, that the average guest is go is not going to be able to ride Flight of Passage, and again, that's um, Twitter being Twitter, but I don't think. Um, I don't think that's the case. Steve Schussler, it is good to see you. I will, uh, I'm will. i going to reach out to you. Um, let me know what the, what the best way to contact you is. If, if you're back in the States, I'll send you a text. Uh, but I'm going to be there next week. I talked to Chef Bob. So, um, But it's going to be um, it, it's going to be interesting what this um, – what – how this is going to play out once it actually rolls out. All right, so I want to try something here. This may or may not work. Uh, you know that sometimes we do um, call-ins on the show. I'm going to try a little bit of a different type of technology, but I want to invite you to call in and weigh in uh, on this topic, on this idea of the club-level guests being able to pay $50. Again, it's $50 per day per guest for a three-day minimum. So, again, a family of four you're now looking at an additional $600 on top of what you're already paying. You're paying $600 for basically nine fast passes each. Um, not everybody is going to be able to, uh, uh, to do that. So let's give this a try. Uh, hey, this is Lou. You're on the air. Hey, Lou. It's Jen Selke. Jen Selke, how are you? 
Good. How are you? I, well, I'm better now that I'm talking to you. I love call-in shows. <laughs> <laughs> I come from a Colin show family of WGN in Chicago. That's actually how I met David Lawrence of oh, there you go. the famous uh, David Lawrence. That's yes. <laughs> so have you been um, have you been paying attention to this conversation, or is this just a hello and happy new year? No, I totally been paying attention because I saw a lot of the people freaking out about the these fast passes, and I mean, you know, listening to what you were saying, the the quantity of people that this is going to apply to is so small. And I don't think most understand how many fast passes and people are using the parks every day that this is just, you know, a drop in the bucket. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's also going to satisfy those guests that do want to pay that little bit extra so that they look, so that they can have the kind of experience that they want for themselves or their kids. They're already spending X amount of dollars Maybe that six hundred dollars is somewhat negligible to them, um, but it'll be a satisfier th to them. But I think that you're right. I think this is not as impactful as people think it might be. Yeah, you know, I wonder, you know, how often Disney does try to meet those expectations, and at that concierge level with that guest that is paying so much more money, I'm sure people felt compelled to try to get them those fast passes for free. And now to be able to say that, you know, this is an option for you if you want them rather than having the cast member try to, you know, say we just can't give those away. Now they can say this is an option for you. Right. Um, and it does cost more money, um, but it would kind of, you know, have an option for those that want to pay it. And then those who don't, they feel like at least they, they know where their route is. And I think you're right. I think for the, the concierge, the club level cast member that might not be able to satisfy <laughs> That request to say, come on, I, you know, I'm paying club level. Why can't you give me ultimate, you know, fast passes every single day? Why, why can't I get to the front of the line? It, it takes that decision-making process out of them because now they have an option for them uh, to do. And like I said, if this was a carte blanche front of the line card that got them unlimited front of the line fast passes throughout the day, then I might have more issue and, and concern with it. Yeah, well, great. It's great to talk to you. The call sounds, the audio quality is uh, awesome. I did have to turn down my radio volume so you didn't get feedback because <laughs> I think there's a delay um, and delay in what I'm seeing on the screen. So it's a good oh, reminder yeah. for people calling in to turn their turn their uh, their Facebook volume down. <laughs> awesome. It was so good to see you last month. Please say hi to your hubby for me. It was great. Take care, Lou. Take care. Thanks for calling. Bye bye. Bye bye. Love Jen Selke. All right. So this, uh, I just turned my mic up. I know some of you said. He had a tough time um, hearing. So uh, Eileen Barton said, DVC Lounge doesn't take anything away from the other guests. This has the potential to take away the ability for other guests to get fast passes, but there's not really a lot of concierge rooms. I agree. Let's take another call because I just did, didn't realize I didn't mute it. Hey, this is Lou. You're on the air. Hey, it's Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Lisa. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Are you uh, Lisa of recently um, transplanted from Baltimore to Florida, Lisa? Close enough. You didn't make the last train to Clarksville stop. It's a <laughs> joke. So, <laughs> yes, it's me. Well, it's good to hear from you. I, I did notice on the WW Radio Nation uh, discussion you had weighed in on this. So I, I'm very curious to hear what your thoughts are on the impact of the club level um, fast pass. Yeah, so I mean, it. I think it's icky. <laughs> <laughs> so explain, no, I mean it's. It, it, there's so many things that have come out like this that people get alarmist and say it's a huge money grab and this, that, and the other. And I, I, this is the first time where I kind of have felt like it's an icky money grab. I mean, I think other than flight of passage, um, you know, and a maybe, maybe a couple of others. It's not that hard to get fast passes. Like, I don't schedule them ever before the day we're going to the park. Um, so, you know, I think if somebody is sort of club level and has never been to Disney World before and doesn't quite, you know. I'm going to stop you. I'm going to stop you because I want to have a conversation. So it's not hard to get fast passes. I, I, I'm, no. I do not disagree with you. However, for the average guest that maybe has never been here before, um, it is more challenging than, especially now you as a local, we take a lot of things for granted. 
the the fact that there's an app that you have to make fast passes, that you have to make you know all these ADRs. You can order your food in advance. But I think what it is, it's not necessarily that, that it's hard, but when you are staying in a club-level room, when you're paying for a first-class ticket, when you go to the concierge desk, what you're looking for is that level of assistance, that concierge level of service that some people want. And that is what I think this is akin to. And because there's only a very small number relative to the number of guests that will be in the park at the same time, you know, on, on the same day, I, I don't see this being incredibly impactful, even if 75% of the club level guests get you know, paid for this additional service. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's, it's a slightly higher impact than you're representing it as because, like, 90% of the people doing this are getting flight of passage. Right, like you can't be like, oh, so some will go to Epcot and some will go to Magic Kingdom and some will go to Hollywood Studios. Flight of passage is what everybody wants, and if people are buying, if people are spending, you know, fifty dollars times how many people there are times three days. Right, but but so and again, I, I I'm not a mathematician, but I play one on TV. If let's say that there's seven hundred rooms and there's two people in a room and half those people do it, let's say that there's fourteen, all fourteen hundred people that are going to buy these additional fast passes are not going to be are not going to be going to Animal Kingdom at nine o'clock in the morning to ride Flight of Passage first. It just it's just mathematically they're not. They are going to be spread out through the parks. They're not going to be in, in Animal Kingdom every single day. I, I understand your point. That is the I feel like you're so so we're 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 just we're debating the wrong thing because my point here really isn't the impact on the parks. I just I, I just think it's a money, it's an unnecessary money grab. And how many of these club level people are making their own fast passes? See, and I don't think it's the travel problem. agents. It's the travel agents doing it, right? Like, you know, we love our travel agents. <laughs> you know, some in particular we love so much. Um, but you know, it's the travel agents that are selling this perk. It's the travel agents who don't have to wake up early in the morning to make the fast passes for these people sixty days out. Um, you know, I. I it's all fine and good, and, you know, it's a lovely thing to offer to, you know, people who are already paying premium prices to stay in the, you know, the nicest rooms on property. It's just, it's just unnecessary. Like, it's, it's unnecessary. I think it's taking advantage of people's lack of knowledge about, it, you know, I, how I fast passes work. I think it's lack of knowledge. I think it's a convenience. You know, we pay... If if you were staying at a con, if you were staying in the club level, you would like that option. It's an option, right? It's not it's not a freebie. It's an option for an added level of convenience. Arguing for argument's sake, I, I do not think it's a money grab because relative to what Disney pulls in in a day, and although they don't release the numbers, we can sort of speculate. Yeah. The the, the yeah. few thousand dollars that they will make on this is is negligible. I would have Which is sort of why it's confusing to me, like, because they don't want to why give bother? It, right, because they don't want to give it to everybody. They don't want to give it to every club-level guest for free because then all of a sudden the impact is much greater. It's an option. You have to, you have to make an affirmative step to buy into it, to do it, um, which I think will, will negate some of, of the impact. But again, until a month, two months, three months, four, six months goes by, we won't see – just how impactful this might be. Um, and there's so many other factors in, we might not know exactly how this is going to factor in unless un and until the waits for flight of passage are 450 minutes all day, every day, then something has to be rectified and we have to see how many of those are getting sold. But I don't think, um, um, I, I don't think it's going to be as devastating for the everyday guests I don't think every concierge level guest is going to take advantage of it, um, but I think it's. Well, they're certainly not, and I don't think you know, I, and I don't think the, the and I don't think the wait times are going to be that telling because nobody's going to get in the line once it gets at a certain point. So you can't be like, oh, you know, the wait wait for flight of passage is in 450 minutes, and so this is not having an impact. <laughs> like you know, it's the average family who. You know, I've stayed at Pop many a time. I think Pop is a great option for a quick trip. When I was building my house, God knows I spent a lot of time at Pop. 
you know, it's, it's a great option. And for somebody who prioritizes park experience over the room, which makes a hell of a lot of sense for a lot of families, you know, they're not going to have access to this. And, you know, it, it's all fine and good. And, you know, I, I agree with you that offering it to everybody would, you know, would be a problem. But at the same time, like, I don't know that the, that the mentality works. Because when I stay at Pop with my family, and, and, and we own DVC, we've stayed at Boardwalk, we've stayed at the Grand Floridian, we've stayed at Poly, and we've stayed at Pop, and we've stayed at the Moderates. I mean, we've, we've been all over the place. But when we've stayed at Pop, because we're prioritizing the park experiences and we're, we're in the room to sleep, right? So the people staying at Pop aren't less into the parks. A lot of times the people staying at Pop are more into the parks than the people staying at the deluxe club level. If you're staying club level, you're planning on spending a lot more time in your room. If I'm staying club level, let me be clear. If, if, I'm, if staying I'm staying club, club level, I'm like, I'm, like, like sitting, <laughs> drinking, like, drinking, like, cordials and eating in my, you know, in my, for my, to get my money's worth I out of club gonna, level. Right. I, I am going to be in the right. Kamehameha Lounge all day, every day, and I'm going to stick it to the man for, for the premium. So maybe it's, I don't know, maybe it does make sense to give those people, like, <laughs> access to Flight of Passage, like, for the 15 minutes that they leave their room. Right, but right. And again, Lisa, you know, <laughs> And I want to hear other opinions on this too. Yeah, I yeah. would have much. I would have much more of an issue if this was the. And I just will call it the Magic Fast Pass. If it was the Magic Front of the Line, and there used to be such a thing um, that you and it wasn't something that was att- obtainable. It was something that could be be given, or or they did it for certain. You know, if you had a car, well, and they still have those. Like you know the. Um... The VIP guides that right. are essentially that for Which, an, again, an asinine you're, amount of money. That VIP guide is costing you six hundred fifty dollars an hour. So, right. um, again, they're available. Not everybody's doing it. Um, so, it. Uh, again, yeah, I mean, time is going to. I'm not being alarmist about this at all. I'm going to let other people call in and give their opinions. I'm not going to prattle on for much longer. But that you know, I, I'm not being an alarmist about this at all. I don't think it's going to lead to like nine hour wait times for a flight of passage or anything like that. I just think it's kind of a miscalculation on their part. I think it's a little bit of a slap in the face to people who are already paying an, you know, a large, huge amount of money to stay in the rooms that it applies to. And I think it's a slap in the face to the people who don't have access to it because they're deciding to prioritize park time over, you know, the, the level of their hotel room. It, I, I you know, was, like I, I would, I, as a club level guest, I'd be a little annoyed that I have to pay more. It, like I, you know, when you have issues at a hotel, like when my when my magic band doesn't work, they give me a free fast pass. Right. Like it's not that hard to get a free fast pass <laughs> <laughs> when you're there. I mean, not 90 days in, in advance, but like, you know, it. it <laughs> I don't know. I, I just feel like they're offending everybody. Like, as a club level guest who's paying, you know, fifteen thousand dollars for, you know, a vacation at the Grand Floridian, at, you know, club level. Like, no, I don't want to pay you more money to get fast pass access. You know, and as a family who's staying at Pop, like, it sucks that you don't have access to it. So, I don't know. I just, so I, I feel me, more like it's a mis. Ca- I feel, I feel more. I, I, I don't think it's like, you know, going to have this huge effect on like people's vacations, but I just feel like it's a miscalculation. So I want to ask you a question and that, I'll, that I'll, I want you to answer. And then I want to hear from other people. You said it, yeah. it stinks that people at pop century don't have access to the service. Would you be more satisfied if Disney allowed everybody to buy three additional fast passes for $50 per person per day for a minimum of three days? Yeah. See now, I think, and I and I, and I still I think, think a really small that's the money. Grab. And I still think a really small number of people would would buy into it. Like I still don't think the impact would be huge. The impact would be, bigger. but I think it's borderline yeah. offensive to offer, you know, to to offer this premium. I can get a VIP guide if I'm staying at Pop. Right. Why can't I buy some fast passes early for ninety days? Because if if you like, can... just just because my vacation calculation and priorities don't line up with the people who are staying club level. Why can't I buy the same benefits? So, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a blip regardless. Like, I, I don't think that many people are going to be buying into it. But I think it's a huge mis- – I mean, maybe it's a tester and they're going to expand it later. But, like, for the time being, I think it's a huge miscalculation on Disney's part to offer an additional paid, you know, benefit – for a high price to people who are already paying a ton of money for their vacation. I, uh, I will say But that, not offering the same thing to people staying elsewhere. I agree with, with Jill McCann because she says, think about all the food you could purchase with that additional money. So I'm with Jill, I'm with you. I, I think that's where we For real. <laughs> for real. 
Well, I listen. I appreciate your um, your your uh, very articulate and well thought out argument. I, I certainly want to hear other opinions. I'm watching as um, comments are going by, and they're they're across the board. Um, they're absolutely across the board. So some people are standing up and clapping. Some people are asking for your home address. So we'll <laughs> we'll <don't, laughs> ask see. my Uber driver. <laughs> um, so, but but thank you. And again, we'll, we'll I want to hear from some other people. And uh, and hear what they have to say. But thank you so much for calling in. All right, good to talk to you. Bye. Congratulations on your medal. Thanks. Bye. Spicy people getting people getting excited. Oh my gosh! So the, quickly, the uh, here we go. Uh, hey, this is Lou. You are on the air. Hey, Lou. It's Nikki Keller. How are you, Nikki Keller? How are you? You know, I am doing great now. <laughs> that is what I love to hear. When, and I haven't when, talked to you in a while, so happy belated New Year. Oh, thank you. Same to you. So please, okay, please so, weigh in. Okay. I'm curious, actually, about what you think about my kind of little, well, my little brain, crazy brain went to. Um, when I saw pilot program, because they're calling this a pilot program, and I was thinking about fast passes and we were talking about tier one rides. I'm the first thing that came to my mind was when they did the seasonal ticket pricing mm-hmm. differences to even out the crowd. Right. And that seems to have worked pretty well because as we said, there aren't really any slow times anymore. We're going to have, Toy Story Land, Star Wars Galaxy Edge, all of Epcot, and who knows what else coming up. Do you see this as possibly could be them testing an advance, an idea of a way to balance out the system? It could be. I think, you know, I think the only way to see the impact of something like this is to execute on it. And to execute on it in, like you said, in a pilot program. Look, they might try it and see that it doesn't work. It's maybe not something that's taken advantage of by guests. Uh, I think this, to me personally, makes a lot more sense. Um, I would have, I would take issue. Not, not that I would take issue. I, I would be. I'd have to think on this more if this was something where every single guest now has the option to buy sort of a priority. Now you're sort of buying fast pass. Now all of a sudden you're separating the people who have been saving for five years for their once in a lifetime family vacation, who are going to have a really tough time riding flight of passage without having to wait for hours on end versus the people who, because now the impact in terms of utilization and the, the, the revenue generation is much different than when you are only impacting 650 to 700 rooms that may or may not be filled throughout the year. Um, Which I I completely and totally agree with you on that. Um, And and it's stinky to use Lisa's word. Um, but, um, But I was just curious, you know, what you thought if you, if I was just completely out of my mind um, to kind of think that way or not. Um, but at any rate, I, I think there's 705 club level rooms. And if I count, if I had the math right and I got the right information, the contemporary itself has 633 rooms, mm-hmm. 25 suites, and 483 villas. And that's just the contemporary. Right. So when you, like you're saying, when you add, when you add all the other club levels to that, I still think you're going to end up with a very tiny percentage. Uh, I do too. And just to interrupt, uh, Chef Bob from the Boathouse says, if the line is too long, just go to the dock bar of the Boathouse. Um, but I think, and uh, to Lisa's point, you know, the like VIP guides haven't meant that people can't get on rides. This won't either. And that's exactly what I'm saying. I think the mm-hmm. impact of this is going to be um, is going to be minimal. I, I don't think you're going to feel the impact on this as much as we have felt the impact of Disney changing how they are marketing for how they have been marketing to international guests. So much so 
that mm-hmm. when September used to be a ghost town here, now all of a sudden the the number of international tourists have has sort of leveled the waters. Right? I saw somebody saying, mm-hmm. yeah, well, now it's always crowded. Well, that's true. And look, at the end of the day, Disney is in business. Like, they are in the business to do one thing, to make – not no, they're not in the business to make money. They're in the business to make a lot of money. And when the park is not crowded, that's bad for business. That's bad for stockholders. They have been able to find mm-hmm. a way to level it off so it, it's busy all the time. And I think for things like this – and I – I think for those concierge level guests that maybe have not been here, they have kids that want to ride a lot of things, they're going to be the ones that take advantage of it. I would bet a dozen Dunkin' Donuts that maybe a majority of club level guests will not even take advantage of this. Because I don't Mm -hmm. think that that's necessarily why they're here or that they've been here so many times that they don't need to. So Mm -hmm. um, it'll be very interesting. and I do have a little confession to make that um, we, we've stayed just once on club level at Animal Kingdom with our DVC points. And we got extra fast passes and we got extra things. And, and then we didn't have to pay for it. And, um, and to be honest, I mean, it really isn't fair in the system because it's based on what the cast member wants to do that you're talking to. This actually makes a rule, and now people, if they want it, will have to pay for it. And to be honest, I like you said, I don't think there's going to be a lot of people who are going to shell out that much money unless it's the only time they're going to come to Walt Disney World or they've never been here before. Look, and I agree with you because I think what this does is it no longer makes the distribution of extra fast passes arbitrary and capricious. Um, because mm-hmm. exactly. it, it no longer is in the, the discretion and the purview of a cast member that has a belligerent guest, uh, whatever kind of guest that feels that they either want to or need to give them extra fast passes. So um, it's an – look, like anything else, it's an option that's there. If they want it, I don't necessarily think mm-hmm. that it's, you know, it's something that everybody is going to do. So, but Mr. Mangello, are you, you implying that – I was a hard to no, deal with no. death. <laughs> no, but let me ask you this. If they had fast passes to the boathouse, I wonder how many of us, like, I would buy a, an annual fast pass to the boathouse. So I could, I mean, I sort of, because mm-hmm. I just go there all the time anyway, but um, I saw Chef mm-hmm. Bob come in and now that I'm, uh, and now I'm hungry, so, <laughs> but. Uh, but, but, no, and it was a pilot program and it, it works. For this, it works, and if it doesn't, it doesn't. Exactly, exactly. And, and I think, you know, time will, will tell for this. So, mm-hmm. But thank you so much for weighing in. I hope thanks. to see you again soon. Yeah, thanks for taking my call. Have a good night. You too. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm. Bye. Well, uh, listen, the um, it, it's uh, clearly there is um, there is a lot of uh, excitement and passion about this. All right, I'll, let me take one more quick call, and then I'll, I'm going to – Hey, this is Lou. You're on the air. Hi, Lou. It's Chrissy Viggs from New Jersey. How are you? Chrissy Viggs from what part of New Jersey? Uh, right now, Point Pleasant. Oh, how's the weather in beautiful Point Pleasant? More importantly, are you close enough to the boardwalk to smell the sausage sandwich and the salt and vinegar <laughs> french fries? I am very close. Oh, man. That's cause that's all I miss about uh, about, about other than well, you. And, all I miss and the pork Jersey. roll, egg, and cheese. And right, Lou? Oh, man. Pork roll and cheese on a nice, like, roll with salt, pepper, ketchup, and a nice cup of coffee in the morning. Whew. You got it. <laughs> I'm more excited about right, like so- that than I would be my $50 Fast Passes. So. <laughs> ah, there you go. All right, Lou, here's my way in on this whole uh, club level. Lay it on me, sister. All right. When my daughter was about two years old, we took her to the poly, and we booked the club level for the sole purpose of having access to milk at all times for <laughs> formulas and things like that. Um, back then, I thought it was expensive, and we're going back nine years ago. Uh, it was great, but for the money, I didn't think you got enough of what they had to offer. It was basically food and access. Like you said, everybody else kind of gives you the same sort of deal. 
Um, my feeling on it is, like you said, it's probably going to be like maybe people that only go to Walt Disney World once in a lifetime, and they're going to go for broke. Mm -hmm. Personally, if I had the extra 600, I would either put it towards a Polynesian bungalow or the boathouse and buy right, lobsters yeah. for the family. <laughs> You know, that's that's my thing. But putting it towards fast passes, we're DVC members. Right. So we know we're going to get there next year and next year and next year. So to us, fast passes aren't a big deal. I uh, Look, I agree. For my family of four, I think that $600 is much better invested at Boathouse than it is at, at Flight of Passage. Um, that's absolutely can, that's one you can make a big seafood tower with that oh yeah <laughs> so for sure um and, and you know you can make you can argue the merits of what might be more memorable so uh, <laughs> 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 i think um my uh my my bonus experiences might actually be much more uh embedded in in my memory than my uh <laughs> attraction experiences in walt disney world so <laughs> Yeah, agreed. Uh, we're not worried about it. On the um, end, we'll have to see. Time will tell. Time that's will tell. it. So, All right, Lou. Thanks it. for taking my call. Thanks so much. Have a great night. All right. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Jesse Fouts says, I think we need to discuss this further over a meal at the boathouse. I mean, I think if this is, there's no better place to have an intelligent, articulate, very long, drawn-out conversation about this than at um than at the boathouse clearly so um i think that's definitely the place so um stan soul says there's no way i'd pay six hundred dollars on fast passes i did just bid six fifty on an olympic torch though look you know for some people stan i think it's actually an interesting comment because for some people it's about the experiences um the experiences are more valuable to them look it's a once in a lifetime trip we're going to go for broke and do club level. We're going to buy the additional fast passes. We're going to get a VIP tour guide because I, not me, I'm speaking as somebody else who has the money. I want my kids to have that once in a lifetime experience. Other people would say, you know what? Let's just do Pop Century. We'll wait online. We're going to wing it. We're going to have fun. But I want to buy a special souvenir. I want to buy that Olympic torch. I want to take home whatever. Um, you know, different strokes for different folks. And I think that's why this is not something that every single club level guest is, is hopping on the phone with their travel agent to, to do because it's not going to be for everybody. Um, and I think that's why the, the impact, you know, might not be as devastating as people are, are saying. And again, we will, um, we will see, we will see. So um, this would not be in the book, 101 ways to save money at Walt, save time at Walt Disney World. It won't necessarily uh, save you money. Sean Embry, yes, I'm going to send an email to the nation tomorrow about the, the next call. So, um, so as these uh, people, Lisa and Martin talking about what you could do. So again, if you had your family of four, $150 a day for, um, this for three day minimums, $600. So I'm going to, I'll put this question to you. If you had $600, if you had a six, if I gave you, no, I'm not that me. If I forget, if I gave you a $600 gift card, to Walt Disney World, but you can only spend it on one thing. Would you? What would you spend it on? Would you spend it on your three days of regular fast passes? These are these are not front of the line. But would you spend it on three days of regular fast passes for your family of four? Would you bring home an amazing souvenir, a bag of souvenirs? Would you go and have some ridiculously delicious meal somewhere, <coughs> boathouse, and and do that? I want to see in the comments, or if you want to call in, let me know what you would do if if you had a six hundred dollar gift card that you can only use like that. What would you spend that extra six hundred dollars on? Um, John Fulton says my first couple of family trips are all about maximizing the ride value and experience. After that, it's more about the overall experience, including rides, dining, and under entertainment. Um, I agree. Lisa would spend it at Victorian Alberts, obviously. Um, Six hundred dollars is three new Dooney and Burke per, per, D, Dooney and Burke purses. Uh, I'd add more days on my tickets versus getting the fast passes. Uh, again, um, different ways to spend your money. Uh, I would spend it on a singular expensive item or a tour of some sort. Remember when I used to do tours way back when? Um, 
pictures, 22 orders of chicken at home coming. That's the solution. So, Colin, that's what I would do. I would take my $600. I would go to Boathouse. I would bring some friends and some nation members over, and we would do Boathouse right. Because um, there's only one way to do Boathouse, and that's right. Um, so, and I know. Lisa, I still owe you a meal. Chef Bob, I have a I have a very special guest that I need to bring to uh, to Boathouse like very soon, or she won't be a friend anymore. Um, the nicest room I can get at the Poly or the Beach Club, two of my favorite resorts. Um, souvenirs and dinner at Cinderella Castle says Mandy B. Uh, Joey Davidson would spend it on a tour. Chad would put it towards a next trip. Um, I would spend $600 on the Sandcastle Club for a babysitter and dinner with the husband. So, Mary Alice Fouts, it's interesting that you say that because, and I don't know if this is rumor or official, that the kids' clubs at Walt Disney World may be closing. Um, There has been a significant drop-off in attendance and utilization at the kids' club. I know Lilo's Playhouse is set to close. I know a lot of the other ones have closed. Uh, I don't know about Sandcastle Club. Uh, I think ones, I think the Gosh, I don't remember what it's called over at the Do- Club Dolphin over at the Walt Disney World Swan and Dolphin. I don't think is impacted by that, but those might be uh, those might be going away. Although things like Kids Night Out are um, still going to um, uh, still going to be available. So, uh, somebody says, Paige says, "New game: Drink every time Lou says Boathouse. Don't play that game because, uh, especially if you're please, not if you're driving. Um, drink responsibly and." If every time I say boathouse, that's not being responsibly. So, so Shanna says the kids club, the kids clubs are um, closing. Perhaps I'd invest my money into pre-ordering the Lou Mangiello audio guide to the World Showcase. Um, that's an investment you want to hold off on for a while. Do they make stretchy pants large enough for me to eat six hundred dollars worth of sushi? So Ricky DJ Technoid Reed. Um, I will tell you that they absolutely do because I've done that before. Um, one day I'll share the story about how I went with a relatively small group of people, and I think our bill at Kimonos was nine seventy five. Um, we ate a lot of sushi, and she came over, and I went, "Do all that again," and she did it again, and then I was selling my kidney the next day for uh, so. Um, only drink when I say I live behind the castle. Uh, take extra fast pass money, put direct deposit on a Disney cruise. Now you're talking. Speaking of cruises, by the way, I almost forgot the other thing that I got to talk about because we are counting down, and I'm looking for the logo. We are counting down to our Alaskan adventure this June. We still have, I think there's now only four cabins available, but they're available at day one pricing. So if you want a ridiculously good deal on a cruise to Alaska and to come with a fun-loving group of people that are going to have an amazing time, we're working on excursions now, go and check it out. But, but, my friends, I have a, I have a task and a contest for you. I can take these things off now. Um, as you know, as we've done in the past, we have had logo contests for our Star Wars cruise, our Double Dip cruise. Uh, I have another logo contest coming up, but now I need your help because my Photoshop skills are abysmal, to say the least. I should have been banned from using Photoshop years ago. So I want you to help us design the logo contest for our Alaskan Adventure 2018. If you go to www.radio.com slash Alaska 18 logo, you could submit your own version or versions, you are absolutely uh, more than uh, welcome to submit more than one logo for our Alaskan Adventure Cruise. The uh, specifics are on that page just in terms of you have to include the WW Radio logo, the Mouse Fan logo. Other than that, it's fair game. And you see what we've done in the past with the Lou Sent Me shirts, with... Um, the, uh, gosh, it was a few other ones that we did. Uh, what I'm going to do again is I will give the winner a mystery box. We don't know what's going to be in the mystery box because I don't know what's going to be in the mystery box. Um, who knows? The mystery box could include things. It could include stuff. It could include experiences. Maybe it's going to include lunch with me at the boathouse. You never know. 
because it's a win-win for everybody. Uh, you have until, let me just do this again. You have until, whoops. You have until Monday, January 22nd. Go to www.radio.com slash Alaska 18 logo. I will post this in the group and in the, um, and on the page. You are, uh, certainly welcome to, uh, uh, spread the word and invite others to do it. And again, you can certainly um, submit more than uh, one logo. Stan Solo says that the prize is going to be the $600 gift card Lou was talking about. It might be. It very well might be. I sent uh, Keith a pretty big box when he designed. What, what, I don't even know what logo was. Was, the, was it the double dip? It might have been the double dip cruise logo from this summer. So, um, <laughs> Lisa, I will tell you this. I will promise you this. Uh, I will take you to the boathouse before I take the winner to the boathouse. Because if I don't, there's a good chance you're going to murder me. Uh, so uh, Richard Begley says, Lou pops out of it. Listen, nobody wants me to pop out of the mystery box. So Chef Bob says, I'll donate a seafood platter. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enter my own contest. Oh, man, there ain't nobody better than Chef. Wow, that, that right there is worth starting to uh, flood and with entries because there's that's part of my death row meal is the seafood plant. I might just, you know, I want to make just spread my ashes along the boathouse because that's where I think I want to just spend all eternity. So I don't get to work much in Photoshop. Lots of time in wow. Vizio. Oh my God. I remember how much time I used to spend in, uh, in Vizio way, way back when uh, Frank Hart, it is good to see you. You can write off a gift card. Right. Uh, Ashley says this is more incentive for me to go. Um, I will tell you the Alaska cruise is amazing. Uh, I had a meeting with Her Majesty yesterday talking about Alaska and some of the excursions and th things that we are planning. And I think the countdown is 159 days and it's going to go like that. So uh, get ready. Get your stretchy pants ready and get your warm stretchy pants ready, too. Just uh, just in case. So Colin Kendall says that does thicken the plot. Uh, I agree. So Stan Solo says we are on for the boathouse. Uh, when am I? <laughs> uh, Jessica McElroy says, why are you planning to be on death row? Well, well, I'm just it's a hypothetical situation. So um, I, I have no uh, I have no plans to be uh, answer Jimmy's question. Wait, let's see. What's Jimmy's question? Uh Jimmy, ask it again in case I missed it because I don't see – I don't see it. Let me go back. Oh, what's my choice between Boathouse and Battlefish? Jimmy, that Paddlefish, uh, it's not even close. It's not even close. Um, it, it is Boathouse far and away. Jeff Bob, I'm not just saying it because you're here. You know that. By the way, I, I uh, yesterday you know I ran into somebody as I was recording um, – a special guest as I was recording yesterday in Disney Springs. Um, I, I think paddlefish is is nice. It's wonderful. I think paddlefish is is it's um, it's a great place to go and get some appetizers to share with friends. But boathouse far and away. I I, I don't even put paddlefish. I don't even put paddle paddlefish in my top five. What do you think about that? So, um, you know you know where my heart lies, Chef Bob. And it's with you and the entire staff at Boathouse. So uh, death by Boathouse is not a bad way to go. I mean, look, Ricky, not to get overly morbid, but if we have to sort of pick the time and the place to go, Boathouse is not the, uh, it is not the, uh, <laughs> it is not the worst place. I don't know what I missed. Um, gee, I'm going to murder you at some point. That might end up getting me on, uh, on death row. Can you order Boathouse takeout in Chicago? No, Becky, part of the Boathouse experience is eating at Boathouse. Like, you can't you can't do leftovers. You got to do it right there. And you got to, like, give yourself time and space when you go to Boathouse. So, um, let's see. Let me catch up here. Uh, let's, from Gibson's. Let's, <laughs> Martin says, let's hope that the Boathouse still has food when we get there in October. I promise they will, because Chef Bob goes, you get fresh fish every single day. So, um, and I'm starving again. I'm starving. Chef Bob, what I wouldn't give for some of that coriander seared tuna. I know it's not on the menu right now, but, but the seafood Terrabon is just so good. It's so, so good. Um, Maureen Carey is asking what, let's have a soft shell crab. Wait a minute. I just missed that. 
I just, let's have a soft shell crab, said Chef Bobby. You had me at soft shell crab. Um, Maureen Carey, I will do a top five. I will do my top five Disney restaurants um, as a show. Uh, maybe, I'm sorry, I'll do a top ten. I will right, we'll do a top ten. Let's have soft shell crab on our death row meal together. Oh, whew. I love all. Um, I love all that. <laughs> Lisa Denoto Glassner. I, I will. I will touch base with you offline about Boathouse. Maybe even ne- next week. Maybe even next week. We might be able to make that happen. So, um, and Nikki Keller, if there's girls' night at Boathouse, I'm in. There cannot be a girls' night at Boathouse without me. I'm one of the girls. I could be one of the girls. Um, $600 for a minivan from Lou's house to Boathouse. Uh, $600 could do some damage at Boathouse. I'll, if I had $600 to spend, I would get a seafood tower, the coriander seared tuna. Um, I would get, I'd have to get a couple of different entrees because I'd find out what the fresh fish is. And it depends on what time I was going. Would I get the lobster roll Manhattan style? Um, would I even consider getting a, a steak? And then the blueberry, uh, chef, I hope you have the blueberry crumb cheesecake because I'm coming in next week, you know. Um, I knew Lou would be talking about food when I turned in, so I'm eating dinner as I'm watching. Ashley Brooke, that is a, uh, a smart, smart person. So plead to chef to bring back the tuna in Lou's honor. Um, if, did I miss that the tuna is gone? Please don't let, please don't say that the, uh, the, the tuna is gone. <laughs> Lou's top five is at Disney Springs Boathouse four times and then a daily poutine. So <laughs> Lisa says you're going to need $600 when I finally get there. Um, I probably will. I probably will. But you know what? It's worth it. It's worth it. I, I mean, the food and the company obviously is uh, is worth it. So And she says, I turn on the live broadcast, not even 30 seconds in, and I hear Boathouse can't wait to lunch there on Saturday. Oh, Angie Pop, you're going to love it. And tell them Lou sent you. It's not going to do anything for you, but you can tell them Lou sent you anyway. Uh, does the Boathouse serve draft beers? Paul Clark, I believe that they do. Um, I, I, I believe they do both inside and outside. Um, Chef Bob might know. Stephanie Perra Bullock says, I don't even eat seafood, and I heart the Boathouse for the steak. It's a Gibson Steakhouse. The only, the, the, they are the only one that has their own USDA certification. Like you think, Boathouse, you have to have fish. The steak is insanely good. Even like the little filet mignon sliders, they're like juicy and they got them on the toasted pie. Oh, Dios mio. What time does Boathouse close tonight? I can still make it there before closing. Uh, Jamie Hecker, how are you, brother, man? I hope you are, uh, I hope you are doing well. I hope you are doing very well. So, um, Let's see. Let me catch up on um, Julie Diley. It is nice to see you. I'm so sorry about tomorrow um, or today. We'll, we'll try and reschedule for tomorrow or this weekend, or I'll see you on Friday, I guess. Um, Carlos Adrian Arazia says, Mongello, you're making me hungry. Welcome to the show. Stephanie says, they also have some sort of lemon, lemon sorbet thing that's also amazing. Stephanie, I'm a savory guy, not a sweet guy, but I will tell you, um, John Delancey is seriously craving fish tacos. Oh, my God. They're so good there. Um, the blueberry crumble cheesecake is the best dessert I have ever had in my life. That was my and that was like my best birthday cake I've ever had, too. The show wraps up quick to allow for a late night run to Boathouse. Aaron Vieira, one of these nights I'm actually going to do it. One of these nights, Chef Bob, I'm going to do the show from the Boathouse. We're going to work something out where I'm going to come. I'll sit outside, uh, dockside, in one of those big comfy chairs, and I'll do this show from your Boathouse and just dilly-dilly, just eat myself crazy. Um, Fish tacos is what I had at Boathouse. They are delicious. Do I have smell-o-vision next time you take... The box to the boathouse, um, no, but you need to go, you know, I, I know I, I, I'm, we're, we're saying this jokingly, but I really do, I, I love it, not just because uh, Chef Bob is in here, so I need the recipe for that cheesecake, you just reminded me, Julie, I don't know if they do that, but man, those pastry chefs there, they uh, they know what they're doing, so Richard Begley is coming down, coming in five weeks to Orlando, going to do some damage to the credit card at the boathouse, tell them Lou sent you, um, 
Oh, are we going live when you finally take me? No, no, no. I think this is something that you just need to, I think you need to have the full boathouse experience. So um, I will let Chef Bob know ahead of time before we come. So uh, to make sure you've been hearing about it for so long, you've been waiting for over a year. So I promised I would take you. I don't know when I actually promised I would take her, but um, according to the to the deposition transcripts, I promised I would take her, and I'm happy to. So now that you're a local, so the box after show live from the boathouse, the box during the show, the pre-show. Daughter heard Lou talking about the boathouse, and all she could think about was salmon steak and rice. Um, God, could you, man, the damage I could do at boathouse. Um, Louis says, where can I get paella in Disney World? Um, I think that you can get paella. You might be able to get it at Paradiso. Um, <laughs> I'd have to think on that. You may be able to get it at Maya over at... I haven't been there in ages, though. You might be able to get it over at Maya at um, at Coronado, but... Lisa's face after the boathouse will be like when she walked off flight of passage. I think, I think we can get Lisa to weep at the boathouse. That's how good, that's how good it could be. So Amanda Banner says, I'm available three weeks from tonight. Just saying, Amanda, I'm sure we need to have a, you know, a mini mastermind one-on-one -on -one meeting there or something uh, to talk about anything. So <laughs> over a year ago, you told me not to go without you and I've been waiting ever <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> um, please do not review or even speak of the Boathouse Blueberry Cheesecake. You have a track record of things disappearing. Uh, that's true. But I think the hopefully the Boathouse is immune from that. So um, Chef Bob says, I'll make you paella if you ask in advance. I'm the master of it. I, it's one of the top ten reasons why. I love Chef Bob from uh, from the Boathouse. So, Maureen Carey says, "My new shirt. I'm only here for the Boathouse. I, I could say I could wear this shirt when I go to the Boathouse, which, by the way, is available at the WW Radio merchandise shop. Although I changed the font to something a little bit more uh, Disney-ish. Um, I, I will tell you something. You will go to the Boathouse for the food. You will go back for the overall experience." Um, You'll go back for the service. You'll go back for the location. Um, it, it is remarkable. It is remarkable. So uh, David Potts even coming to your defense says, I can remember about three separate occasions where you promised to take her to the boathouse, though I could easily forget if you promised to take me. To... <laughs> David, if I hadn't read that out loud, I could have uh, done that. But Brian Walton, that's, a, that's actually a, a great, uh, it's off property, but you're right. Uh, Columbia is um, is down in celebration as well. So um, Quincy says, I haven't had dinner yet. I am so hungry. Jester McElroy has never heard of. Pa oh, my gosh. Um, I love Latin food. Paella is they make it in this giant thing. Which it's got um, rice and seafood and mussels and shrimp and chicken and, and uh, uh, chorizo. It's it is so good. It is so good. <laughs> Chrissy Viggs says, new shirt, got Bob. Cindy moots up and says, I had that. Um, Marla Chan's going, I'm going to build my own meetup for the boathouse in May. Marla Chan, that's fine. As long as you in, invite me, then uh, I, I will absolutely be there. So, David Potts. Um, good Lord, a night on the dock with some swordfish, fish tacos, tuna, and a bottle of wine is pretty much exactly what I need. John Delancey. Again, I know you're coming down here very, very soon. If we need to sort of do a one-on-one -on -one, uh, consulting outside the, the confines of our mastermind call, then there is no better place. That's where I met with Armando before um, before he joined the group. Armando and I had, I think, like a three-and-a-half or four-hour meeting at the Boathouse one afternoon. So um, <laughs> does the Boathouse work for solo travelers? Absolutely. Um you can eat inside, you can eat outside, you can go to the dockside bar, you can go sit on those wonderful comfy chairs that surround the, um, the museum of antique boats. So absolutely, absolutely. Um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> Rob DeLeon says, body by Bob. Yeah, this is all Chef Bob's doing. 
right here. And that's why I wear black, because it's it's slimming, as slimming as I can possibly be. So, uh, Jamie Williams says, I went by myself, ate at the Dockside Bar. The full menu is available out there. That's the secret. The secret is that you don't necessarily need a reservation. If you can go out to the, if there's room at the bar outside, you have access to the full menu. So, poor Lou, stuck at the boathouse. No, Stephanie, that was a nice day. The weather was perfect. We had a very good, very productive meeting. We talked a lot. We ate a lot. And then we ate some more. So um, maybe that's what I need to offer for my one-on-one. Like, So I offer like one-on-one consulting, mentoring. I don't like the word coaching, whatever. Maybe I should do an offer where we can also do it in person at the boathouse. Like that's a no-brainer. Maybe we'll even give like a discount if we do it at the boathouse because we get to go to the boathouse. So uh, that's where I met Armando before Momentum. Armando likes boathouse. Armando flew down just for our meeting and specifically requested, demanded that we go to um, we go to boathouse. So Mike Vidal, have a good night. Patrick Pulliam, nice to see you as well. Um, line Q solution for the for flight of passage. Just put it straight through the boathouse. No one will mind. I agree, and the boathouse would, uh, could you imagine that? Could you? But again, part of the boathouse experience is going to the uh, is going to the boathouse. So Lisa says you might want to change a topic while we are still friends. I will do that. It, it is almost 9 o'clock. Let me, um, let me do this. Let me do a little bit more uh, call-ins. You don't have to talk about specifically the, um, the fast passes. You can talk about anything at all that you want, including but not limited to the boathouse. I don't have my Ask Me Anything logo up, but you can call in and, like I said, ask me uh, ask me anything at all that you like. I'll take a couple of calls before we go. Would you rather do call-ins or you want to play 20 questions for a, uh, for a prize? Nikki Keller says, what is my most anticipated 2018 movie? It has to be Infinity War, um, without a doubt, without a doubt. Uh, I'm looking forward to Black Panther. The recent trailers have... Um, uh, maybe more excited, but it's certainly Infinity War. Uh, hey, this is Lou. You're on the air. Hi, Lou. This is Jim O'Neill hey, in Michigan. Jim. Hey, brother. How are you? Good, good. Doing good. Um, I was wondering if you were going to have any, for the Alaska cruise in June, are you going to have any kind of organized group excursions or just kind of come as you go? Absolutely. So that's one of the things that we've been working on. Um, I have been working with Her Majesty, who's been working with the suppliers, <laughs> Um, and probably in the next couple of weeks, we'll have something. Final payments are coming up in February, um, which is you, you can't start booking anything until that point anyway. But um, I, have, I have sort of hand selected a few different excursions that you can do, you know, with me and with us, or you're certainly welcome to do some on your own as well, um, because there's such a wide variety. And we talk about it actually on. This week's show, we talk about um, some of the different Alaska excursions that are available and some of the ones that I personally like having been there in the past. So I'll be doing some. Becky might be doing some that are a little bit different because there's different um, interest and intensity levels that really run the gamut there. Yeah, I, I heard the show, and I'm with you on the uh, <clears throat> the train ride. Not sure my wife is up for it, though. She doesn't do too well with heights, so it might just be me and my son with you. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. It is yep, beautiful. Yep, looking forward to it. Cool. Uh, I'm sure whatever we decide to do, it'll be a great time. I'm looking forward to it a lot. Absolutely, I am as well. I'm looking forward to seeing it. And I'm sure, I was going to say, I'm, looking for, I'm sure you're looking forward to getting out of the, uh, the cold there, but we're going to Alaska, so. <laughs> but it's not going to be that bad, I promise. <laughs> Last week, it was minus four here. It was 30 degrees in Juneau. <laughs> I don't know how you do it, but God bless you, bro. Yep, yep. All right. Thanks, Lou. Thanks for all you do. Have a good night, man. Take Take care. care. Bye-bye. Thanks, Mike. Chef Bob, thank you so much for watching, man. I I appreciate it. Let's take another one. Hey, it's Lou. You're on the air. Hi. um, This is Isaiah. Um, Isaiah, I was wondering what you thought about the... um, the monorail situation that is all over Twitter recently with the doors opening pretty much the day after they put up the signs of don't lean against the door. So listen, and this is my, my take on it. You know, if you think about 40 plus years of the monorails being in existence 
and mm -hmm. the thousands and tens and hundreds of thousands of times that that goes around in a circle, this is one of those incredibly rare opportunities where it appears as though there's a mechanical malfunction. Um, it's it it happens. It, things break, and you know that's like a, if you said, "I can't believe a bus broke down in New York City." It's sort of analogous to the same thing. Fortunately, nobody was hurt. Everybody was smart enough to stay away from it. But it's not, um, I, you know, I, I don't think it's as big of a deal um, because nobody got hurt. As big of a deal as, as some people make it. It's a mechanical thing, and mechanical things malfunction and they break. And uh, you know, I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure it's been fixed. So, again, considering the amount of times it happened once in uh, in 40 plus years, it's not, it's not significant. Mm -hmm. I completely agree with you. Now, um, another question, though, is do you think they should be putting more money into the monorail system or into, you know, the stuff with the, um, the oh, what do you call it, the Skyliner thing? Well, I think I think what, what happens is, you know, they, they're maintaining the monorail system to any sort of investment in trying to upgrade or update the monorails would be, you know, monumental in terms of buying new monorail cars, which I don't think that you need to do. The, the ones that they have work fine. I think there's also a sense of nostalgia that's attached to them as well. Um, so I don't think that there's any sort of upgrades that you can do to the monorail, but I like the fact that they are investing in minivans, the Skyway buckets, new buses, expanded buses, uh, more envi or my environmentally friendly buses, so that what is happening is that the congestion is starting to get much more spread out um, you know, especially with new resorts coming, a lot more guests coming in for uh, the expansion as well. All right. Thank you. All right, brother. Have a good night, man. You too. See you. I have to put my goggles on so I can, uh, I can see this. Uh, let me see. Let me catch up here. Monorail doors always been, remember the old monorail doors that they used to close by hand? Um, I used to love that sound. I used to love the sound of the monorail doors closed. All right, I'll take one more call from the evening. Uh, hey, Lou, you are on the air. Hey, this is Jamie in Mississippi. Hey, Jamie in Mississippi. How are you? I'm good. Um, I was just calling to see if you had any kind of preview on the Edison or more information about that. So I went to the Edison, gosh, my time, my space-time continuum was all messed up, but a week, a week and a half ago, they did a, um, a grand opening and media preview for it right after the new year. Um, they are officially opened. I have walked through the venue. I have not eaten there as yet. Um, it's beautiful. It's very cool. It has a um, uh, this very sort of utilitarian steampunk vibe to it. I cannot speak to the food. I have eaten, um, again, only during a preview of Maria and Enzo's. To say that I really enjoyed it, what, what I tasted, to qualify it, is an understatement. I had 17 rice balls, so there you go. Um, but until I go in as a regular guest for a full meal, I really can't speak to it. I, cannot, I can only speak to what it looks like, not what it tastes like, because I don't know what the service is going to be like. I don't know what the food is going to be like. But it's exciting. Um, those four venues all offer not just different experiences, but different food types as well. So I think it's going to add a um, some additional opportunities for dining experiences, as well as Edison is going to be really um, positioned as a uh, a nightlife, a separate sort of nightlife experience too. Yeah, I heard somebody comparing the Edison nightlife area when, they, especially when they do the after ten hours for mm -hmm. adults. Only. To give it more of like a pleasure island kind of vibe, but without overdoing it, you know, just having like that one entertainment area. Right. So I thought that was cool. It's going to be interesting. I, I think the Edison for me is definitely a wait and see. Uh, I'll be curious to see how it's going to work. They are going to charge a cover charge after a certain time of night. It's also going to be um, 21 and up. So it is definitely going to sort of make that switch, as a lot of places do, uh, into more of a club nighttime entertainment venue so we'll see will be will people be willing to either stay or be willing to pay in order to get um into the edison it, it didn't work for adventures club but i think it was a much different for, for different reasons um there was no food there um it was a, it was more of an, an entertainment show as opposed to a place to go and 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 hang out or dance or listen to live music um 
But it's a beautiful venue, so I'll, again, I'll give it a month or so for them to work out their kinks, um, get a little bit of their internal rhythm going, and then I'll go and check it out and do a live review. I'll take one for the team. Awesome. <laughs> Look forward to it. I saw your review of Maria and Enzo's, and that was hilarious. I think I was I was doing like a rice ball count for you. <laughs> right. Megan Eichner just said 17 at once. And they were small, Megan. They, they were little rice balls, just to be clear. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. They weren't traditional, like, big, fat Italian softballs. So it's true. Very true. Right. They were Thanks. delicious. Thank you so much. Have a Thanks, great night. Lou. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. So uh, Becky says, I'm going to try the Edison when I come back in a couple of weeks. We'll see if she takes me or not. We'll see if Becky takes me to the Edison or one of her other more favorite or partner partners. So um, so Paul Clark says, uh, from Lou's videos, it seems very interesting with the Roman characters. Seems like the Adventurers Club. Uh, whoops. Let's take one more. Sorry, I forgot to turn this off. Um, hey, this is Lou. You're on the air. Hello, is that the boat house? <laughs> Martin, my friend, it, it would not be a show had we not heard from you. I was just about to go to bed. Can you read me a bedtime story? I can. Once upon a time, in a far-off land, <laughs> there lived a, a king of his castle, and his name was Chef Robert. I was going to say, you could do the menu of the boat house. I can. I can Good. recite it to you uh, almost from memory. So Becky makes fun of me because I can walk into restaurants like I did the other day, and not even look at the menu. Uh, although I do look, I always look at the boathouse, because you never know what's going to be new and different there. So, oh, Well, I'm hoping to get, I have done the boathouse um, in Salisbury, which is in the UK. <laughs> uh, the pork chops were good, but that's about it. Nothing compared to what I can hear from the boathouse in the States. I have no so, idea what you just said, but it, but I, I heard pork chops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our pork chops are really pork rocking. Chops. They're really good, but I'm not sure if it'd be better than the boat ass stuff. Uh, we'll, so. see, well, you know, when I come out to the UK, we'll have to find out. So Hey, hey, now don't stop teasing again. Well, listen, so when are you coming out? There's conversations <laughs> have been happening. I mean, fortunately, Becky's not here. I know she's here. Fortunately, Becky's not oh. here for me to start throwing out dates and, and plans for a UK trip. But we're making plans for a UK trip. So, oh, I want to hear that. I want to. Is it going to be this year or next uh, year? We'll see. We'll see. Conversations are, are underway, so we'll see what, what we're able to well, do. Well, I'm hoping, that, as you know, we're coming out in October. Um, so if I can't do the boat house, I'll do the Edison because that looks pretty good. I like the look of that. That's fine. You and I definitely have to get together for a meal again. It was one of. Uh, it was a, a wonderful time last time you were here. Oh, it was brilliant. It was, I'm hoping we say, if we do that, I'd like to get the old boy Ricky with us as well, mate. Wouldn't that be a dream? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm hoping he's going to come down. Oh, actually, yeah, you know that $600 thing you can save on it? I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll give it to Ricky. You know, you're a good man. You are, see that? The first, you're so generous with, uh, with your $600, giving it to Ricky so he can come down here. It's all right, mate. How about quickly asking you, um, how, was, how was the Christmas snacks then? Were they all right? Um... They were delicious. I had never had that before. Um, I, I didn't even know what was in it before I ate it. I just said it's from Martin, so I trust him, and I ate it. And I, my family was a little bit more uh, reluctant to give it a shot, but I thought yeah. it was wonderful. You are you were incredibly thoughtful, my friend. I tell you, I tell you, for years when I was a kid, those mince pies they scare the life out of me. But they're, they're, <laughs> it's, it's fruit. But it sounds like, you know, something you really wouldn't want having a pie uh, that's uh, like for a pudding or dessert, you know. I didn't know if it was like, when, you, when I saw mince pie, I didn't know if it was like mint meat or if there was... I know. Yeah, yeah. The, good old English language, really confusing, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so what, did you have, did you have a try of the uh, Christmas pud? The Christmas pud, uh, wait, did I? Tell me what you that... Better. Would I? <laughs> what was the Christmas pud? Wait a minute. <laughs> That's the one in the round little tub that you cook and turn upside down, I think, and bang it out, and then you put like custard on it and all that stuff. Um, you better get back to your menu. Have a look. I I do. I, there was a couple <laughs> things I didn't finish, so maybe that was one of them. Um, but I love. But the mince pies I really liked. And so you got you, you got. Um, I gave you jaffa cakes as well. Yeah, you got your jaffa. Those I ate, and I'm so happy that the rest of my family doesn't like those, so I can have them all myself. <laughs> I, I love that. I think that's brilliant. It's so funny. Because, oh, I mean, it's dark chocolate, it's orange, you know, it's a, it's a win, 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 really, isn't I'm it? I'm just, I, listen, I'm looking forward, the thing I'm looking forward to coming to the UK for, I don't care, I don't want to see the Queen, I don't want to see Big Ben, I don't want to see Parliament, 
I want to see you, I want to see Emma, and I just want to eat with you guys. That's it. Oh. Well, I tell you, a, I've got a menu a mile long about the food you're going to have to try, but <laughs> I, am a, I am a bit worried about you because you'll be going, what's in that? What's in that? You know, there's I some will, foods um, that you don't want to try. <laughs> I will try anything once. I'll well, I'll tell you what, the, the best one is the best, uh, I think we've uh, said about it before, like having a good old English breakfast, right? You've got to have, definitely got to have a good old English breakfast, but don't have the oh, black pudding. Oh, <laughs> I know some people like it, but no, no, that, that's, that's t- just I'll going t- too far. I'll take a small taste. I'll take a small yeah. taste. <laughs> it's going to the dark side, the real dark side, that is, mate. So, whoa, especially like in the morning. Uh, but I just thought, hopefully, as I say, we're looking forward to seeing you in October. Um, hopefully, Ricky will be there as well. Uh, but if not, I'll see you whenever you get over this little island here you know this little place where we all live and hope you turn up and have a look around one day i look forward to it i will bring a uh, i'll bring a translator so i can understand what you people are saying <laughs> <laughs> right yo sir Johnny right, good of you. <laughs> yes i say and don't forget your stretchy pants <laughs> you right, are mate. a good man sir and i know it must be late at night uh, almost morning for you over there yeah, and the trouble is, I don't know why, but I do. I told you before, I keep shouting when I'm on this thing. It's like, you know, I'm, I, I must be in artillery or something. Just play anything loud, okay? Yeah. So, yeah, um, thanks very much for this great show, mate. And, yeah, speak to you soon whenever I can. You got it, brother. Thank you so much, man. Take care, mate. Take care, brother. Bye-bye. Bye. Ah, oh, he's a good man. I love those United Kingdoms. Oh, anyway, let's see here. There we go. Um... Everyone lives in castles. They long for a bungalow. Um, yeah, Martin is a good guy. I'm excited to uh, to head out there. Um, and fortunately, Becky's not here, so I can give you all the details. I know she's here. I know. Uh, but we're working on it. We are working on plans for a uh, a visit to the United Kingdom and to Paris and uh, and all the foods that come with it. But uh, speaking of food, I am famished, and I also have a uh, a veritable uh, English boatload of work to get done the rest of the night tonight. I really appreciate all of you uh, calling in, weighing in on the club level fast pass. Please keep this conversation going, especially as uh, continuing things develop. If you are not part of the WW Radio Box People group, please go over and join. That, I think, is, as opposed to the page, the group is a much better place to start and have conversations because you don't have to wait for an administrator to post something for you to comment on. I want you to start and lead conversations and discussions debates, whatever it might be, over in the Box People group. And please do me a favor, uh, invite your friends over to uh, be part of this very warm, very welcoming, and incredible community that you guys have created. Don't forget that Friday, I am going to be in Epcot Center at the Festival of the Arts. I don't have a specific timetable as yet, but I will be live broadcasting while I am there. Also, don't forget about our Alaskan Adventure logo contest. It is officially underway. You have about 12-ish days to submit your design or your designs, plural, at www.radio.com slash Alaska18 logo. And if you want to join us in Alaska, Becky and her friends and mine over at Mouse Fan Travel can still give you a no-obligation quote and still get you some of those few remaining cabins at day one pricing. You will save literally hundreds of dollars you can take that money and buy the uh you can buy all the fast passes or boathouses that you need with the money that you will save i really appreciate becky and the entire team oh man i'm gonna get it right it's this side over at mouse fan travel it was uh oops there you go it was nice to see her and uh, and some uh, people from her team the uh um uh, over the weekend at the marathon and mostly uh, I need to thank you. Um, I continue to look forward to Wednesday nights. It has been now coming up on 11 years that we have done this each and every week. And I love doing it, not for you, um, but with you. And that's why I love this medium so much more. Um, I don't want to say more than a pod, but sometimes more than the podcast because it's real time, one-on-one, a small group engagement, which is what I love about it. If there's something that you want to see me do, something you want to hear me cover on the show, by all means, please let me know. Uh, but until next time, thank you guys so much. I appreciate everybody who commented, who called in, and also who shared this 
with their friends as well. I will see you Friday from Festival of the Arts. And uh, I have a couple other surprises for you coming up in the next week or so. Uh, Thank you guys again. Have a great night. See ya.